Welcome to Revival Radio TV. I'm Gene Bailey. We're going to dive right into it today with my guest, Colin Dye. If you haven't seen the other program on Colin, you need to go back and watch that so we can get you caught up to date. He was a senior pastor of Kensington Temple for many years. But I want to ask him this question. We didn't get to George Jeffries. And George Jeffries bought that facility, Kensington Temple, and brought it into his denomination. Tell us the connection there with George Jeffries. I want to hear some stories uh, about that. Well, there's plenty of stories to tell, Gene. Yeah, please. I need to go back a little bit. The church was a congregational church uh, built in 1859. And that story of how that building got there as a congregational church is called Horbury Chapel. Uh, it's a beautiful story. A congregational congregation in Kensington mm. noticed that this area of Notting Hill was now getting a lot of people coming. It was farmlands, a lot of people, workers, and a lot of poverty and crowds of people. They had a prayer meeting right. and they, in the Kensington congregation and said, God, how are we going to reach these people? The Holy Spirit came. They began to weep and they took up an offering. I think it was 600 pounds. And back in the 1800s, that was a lot of money. So they went and laid the foundation stone of Horbury Chapel. Mm. So that became what was later bought by George Jeffries wow. in 1930, renovated and reopened in 1931 to be Kensington Temple. History has recorded the fact that God has never left the world without a witness to this glorious message throughout the present dispensation. In our day, there are multitudes who are testifying to the blessings they have received through this ministry. The greatest revival that the world has ever witnessed is taking place through the force their gospel message. Hundreds of thousands of lives and homes are being transformed. It is the worldwide outpouring of the Holy Spirit with supernatural signs that tens of thousands of born-again people are experiencing in every country under the canopy of heaven. In fulfillment of prophecy given in both the Old and New Testament, God is pouring out His Spirit. Believers are everywhere receiving the Holy Spirit as the disciples did on the day of Pentecost. Miracles of healing, just as marvelous as those recorded in the Acts of the Apostles, are taking place in every land. For the miraculous gifts are in evidence today, just as they were in the first days of Christianity. George Jeffries, we've talked about him on this program, you know, the thousands, tens of thousands of converts that he had. But one of the things that, you know, when we talk about George Jeffries is the amazing healings that happened. Is there a connection? What kind of connection is there with you and the church well, with him? Well, uh, when I came to Christ in 1971, many people were alive at the time who could speak directly about George Jeffrey's ministry. They said the, the anointing was phenomenal and uh, even accounts of him in Kensington Temple, really? conducting the singing in right. an animated way, the old Pentecostal way, and then standing up on the chairs and conducting. And then suddenly he would say, just a minute, wait a minute. And he sensed that it was time to move into praying for healing and phenomenal healings would take place. Understand that God doesn't change. Jesus doesn't change. Right. The same prom promises that George Jeffrey stepped out on, the same Holy Spirit that was upon him is available for us all. But I don't know what it was. Something shifted. I started a, a mission into Kenya, my, my birthplace, and we were in a little, little I was going to say mission hall. It was a mud hut. Right. somebody's home that they cleared out for us to hold meetings. And uh, I remember, you know, I'm saved, but I'm still very British. And there was these people pushing and shoving each other, not standing in a queue, a healing line. <laughs> and I thought, this lady's pushing, so she can just wait. But when I got to her, oh, I felt so bad because... She wasn't pushing and shoving. She was blind. Ah, uh, wow. She couldn't see. Yeah. All we had was a little oil lamp dangerously close to the thatched top, the, the, yeah. the grass roof. And so 
Now was, it, now was the time. My team, who had been with me all the way, stepped back over to you, Colin. <laughs> so I put my right. hands on her eyes. Uh, I prayed every prayer that I could think of until eventually you got to let go. Right. <laughs> I let go. And through the interpreter, she was a Kikuyu speaker, they said, Mama, do you see? And she said, yes, I see. And then the interpreter said, what do you see? And she blinked just in the dim light. Right. She saw my face and she screamed, ah, I see a white man. <laughs> and this is, I mean, I, th- I find that so beautiful. Yeah, that's great. And so humorous and yeah. so wonderful. And um, th- that was a major, major breakthrough. But really, I can say with so many people today who just simply want to step out in God's word, right. trust him to do what he said he would do, signs and wonders and healings and miracles all over the world. Let me quote uh, something George Jeffrey said. I want you to comment on this. He said, the age of miracles is not past. I still believe that the Lord Jesus Christ is still savior, healer, baptizer in the Holy Ghost and the coming king. What do you think of that? I think it's wonderful. This of course is the four square gospel. That's right. That was, uh, Linked at that time, there was a, a link between Amy Semple McPherson right. here in the States and George Jeffries. He preached for her, she preached for him, and in Kensington Temple and also in the Royal Albert Hall. Right. And I'm told that she took drawings of the Royal Albert Hall, which later became the basis for Los mm. Angeles Temple. I don't know how true that is, but that's what I, I Well, you know, I can definitely see. It does make me think of it. Both, I've been to both places. It does definitely remind me of that. All right, here's another quote George Jeffrey said. He said, our only hope for the nation and the world is to get back to the Bible, back to the word of God, as long as Jesus is kept in the front and made the center of fellowship and blessing and unity, the revival will never end. So here's my question with that in mind. How does a revival even really start? Let's make this simple. Wow. Hungry hearts, believing that God will do what he said he will do. Right. I see a commonality in most revivals. Number one, they're not produced by man. Right. It's God. We can't make him. There's no formula. Yes. But there are some common elements. Hunger prayer, intercession. Then there comes a time, which it did in Jeffrey's time, also in the Hebridean revival right. with Duncan Campbell, when the prayer was, Lord, you've promised water on thirsty ground. We hold you to your promise. Come and do what you said you would do. Not only do what only you can do, not of man, but do what you've promised to do. And we put those, those two things together and God, God will move. The other thing in the quote that I really, really love, and I can still stand, see it st- standing today. Back in those days, mm. it was the Bible. Not the Bible and mm-hmm. gimmicks. That's right. The Bible and strategies and structures. Now, of course, so many of these things are important. We've got to give attention to how sure. we do things. But it is the Bible only. Now, the problem today in many places, is we've replaced the Bible with something else. The Bible with motivational, inspirational right. speaking. The Bible and various techniques of attract, attracting people. But it's the Word of God preached in the power of the Holy Spirit with simplicity and holding the Bible as our ultimate authority. It's the authority of the Word of God. And so... I found myself at times defending the Bible alongside uh, conservative evangelicals who don't necessarily believe in the uh, gifts of the Spirit in the way that I do. But the old time Pentecostals and all that truly flows in that authentic Pentecostal tradition is the Word and the Spirit, the Bible and the power of God. And just when you read what George Jeffries said in that quote, it's, it reminded me of how 
when a, 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 a movement deviates from the scripture, it, it's over. But when we stay true to the scripture, not as dry academic intellectual um, uh, presentation, but depending on the power of the Holy Spirit. It's the Word and the Spirit. Absolutely. You know, it's powerful when you say the Word and the Spirit, and I, I so appreciate what you said because so many, there's, if there's a book written on one topic in all of Christianity, it's about revival. And everybody's got their, you know, pardon me if you wrote it, but there's a formula or that you do this and then that will happen or you're, you force God into a situation. Yet when we go back and we look at even in Wales, you know, with Evan Roberts, you know, here his father wanted to have him committed because he thought he was going crazy walking around town talking to himself. Well, he was praying, but nobody did that back yeah. then. So, you know, in those, in that light, here's somebody that just wanted God. And, you know, his prayer was bend me. Mm. You know, that was yes. the extent of it. So <clears throat> the simplicity of that, the attitude of the heart, the hunger, there's, I know not everyone likes this phrase, but I, I like it because it's attitude of the heart that I, I have to get to the place that I'm desperate for God. Exactly. Um, and, and do you know that George Jeffries uh, was born again in 1904 in the Welsh Revival? Yes. So that deep experiential nature of, of revival where, people, where God shows up and we experience him, that was... George Jeffries as well, because but he had the solid understanding of Scripture and the preaching of the Word, right. which which I think um, has has carried carry, carried the revi the revival forward. Um, the other the other thing I would say, because it's emphasis on the revival will never leave, it will never stop. Um, the Welsh revival ended. Um, Pentecostal revivals have come and gone. I know that. But the moment we start to build around what God has done, an institutional edifice, and stop moving, right. it's over. And my challenge to my own denomination has been frequently, and, and any uh, group of people that have a history of God moving, go back to that history, your your destiny, the key to your destiny is in your history. Right. So go back to your history, rediscover what God did, but also bringing that right up to date to what he is doing now. It won't be in the same format right. or, or manifest in exactly the same way, but it, the, all the elements will be there. A hunger for God, crying out to God, intercession, prayer, preaching the gospel, trusting God for all your needs, asking God to honor his word with signs and wonders and the power of the Holy Spirit. Why did the revival stop in Wales? Why did it, why do we see it end? I know you said because we built an edifice around that and we can see that, but, that, that even wasn't with the exactly the, Yeah, that wasn't exactly the case with, with, right. with um, uh, the Welsh revival. Although you go to Wales now, to the places of revival, I mean, we want to speak faith, Right. They're dry bones. They are. They can live, yeah. but they are dry. They're a remnant of what was. So I'm not saying nothing can change. Um, to my understanding, what was missing was the word. Mm. So we had the, maybe we had the spirit side mm. or wonderful uh, exhibitions of God yeah. pouring out and healing, and, but maybe we didn't, it wasn't grounded? I think there was not enough substance. The other thing was people got burnt out. Hmm. Um, the workload was phenomenal. Yes. The output was phenomenal. We have to learn how to sustain our strength in the presence of God, not by burning ourselves out. How do we continue for the long haul? And this is, this is what I, I'm delighted about the ministry here. It's a long-term ministry right. that does not burn out because it takes time to feed, to get back in what, what uh, right. has, has gone out. And, and I, I, in my own life, I can tell you when, when God shows up in a service and something wonderful happens, and you know, other than your message, 
you know, where yeah. something really, you see somebody's life change. It be, it's, if you're not careful, that becomes an addiction because your first thought is, let's do this tomorrow night. Yes. Let's do this, let's do this all week mm-hmm. long. This is the revival. You know, this is where we're at. Is, is, this is where um, I want you to talk and speak to that because it sounds bad to say revival, it can be an addiction where you push, you're pushing yourself because this is the time and the hour. I must do this. I must make this happen. And you start forming something that's of man, not, yeah. of, not of God. I think um, the, the best illustration from the scriptures yes. is Elijah. Right. I mean, he, he did everything by the word of the Lord. Mm. We never see a repeat of fire from heaven in exactly the same way uh, uh, it may have happened. But that was unique. That's how God manifested. And he, he listened to God. He built the altar. No fire under it. Uh, uh, let, let God do it. And we have to learn it and relearn it. Beautiful story from, from Kensington Temple during my time there when I was not the senior leader, mm. whether I was a deacon or a beacon or whatever it was, I don't know. <laughs> but back in the day, when Lewis comes to the meeting and he's a bit uneasy. And he says, I'm not, I'm not sure. He's a bit uneasy. I'm not, I'm not sure what's happening today. And then later he recounted the story. When he preached his, prepared his message, prepared the order of service. Mm-hmm. We say we're not liturgical, but there's an order of service. And at the end of his preparation, he told me, Holy Spirit said to him, where do I fit in? Mm. Lovely outline. Where do I fit in? And when said, he answered God back, do whatever you want to do. They went through the whole service. And when was saying, well, Lord, I said, do whatever you want to do. Right then, a lady who could not walk, leapt up, completely healed, and ran around the building. Wow. And so, for a man, I, I look, look up to, looked up to Wynne Lewis as a great man of the spirit, but if a man like that can still find maybe he's following a formula or forgetting the Holy Spirit, when the Holy Spirit has freedom, he has the freedom to rip up everything that we think we should be doing. And, and lead. So this, when we get our eyes off God onto either the fruits, the effects, or you, you said a kind of addiction. The addiction is to the way we do things that we think make right. it all work. Sure. And that's so wrong. It's not of man. It's all of God. And it never works. <laughs> it never <laughs> not works. Not the second time. It never works the second time. This is, we had... Uh, Pastor John Kilpatrick here talking about what happened with Pensacola in the Brownsville revival. And really the truth is he was missing his mother who had recently passed away. She had just died of pancreatic cancer. So, I I mean, I just, I was close to her, I loved her. And I had all these memories, you know, come flooding in. All my yesteryears came flooding in. And I knew she's never coming back. Well, I was just sad. I, was, I wasn't depressed, I don't think, but I was really sad. I was just blue. Well, I woke up the next morning on Father's Day. I'm 95, and I'm really heavy. So I said to myself, I'm not going today. I'm on just, since I got Steve there, he can preach, and I'll just have a staff member take the preliminaries and I'm sure. stay home. So, um, but then I remembered, I said, oh boy, I've got to present a plaque to the Father of the Year today. Well, when I got to church, man, I didn't want to be there. I didn't want to hear Steve. I didn't want to hear the singing. I didn't want to sit on the platform. I wanted to be left alone. Yeah. You know? So anyway, Steve got up and preached, and he didn't preach over 15, 20 minutes. And I still remember his message, two points. Jesus loves you, and he has a plan for your life. And in about 20 minutes, he called people forward. We had about 1,700 people there that morning. So when he called the people forward for prayer, 
There was about a thousand people lunged forward for prayer. I was so upset because it's Father's Day, and I said to myself, my God, now we got to pray for a thousand people on Father's Day. <laughs> you know, and so he yeah. just bounded off the platform. And so after a while, I sat there for about 15, 20 minutes, and I thought, well, this don't look good. I guess I better get up, go down there, and, you know, put on an effort anyway. So when I, when I walked across the platform, and I stepped down the steps of the platform onto the main floor, I literally felt a wind whipping around my socks. Mm -hmm. It felt like a wind whipping around my socks. And when I got down there, I thought, well, my God, that air conditioner sure is strong this morning. So Steve was praying for a big old tall man. I had my hand on Steve's back like that, and I had my hand on this guy's shoulder. So Steve got through praying for him, and he moved on. Well, when Steve moved on, I couldn't walk. I literally could not walk. And so then what happened? Whenever I couldn't walk, they helped me up on the platform. And whenever I got back up on the platform, I told the audience, I said, oh my God, church. I said, this is it. This is what we've been praying for. Get in. I love that part of the story yeah. because it doesn't fit any, yeah. uh, like you said, liturgical order of service. It really is like, God just showed up, you know? And I think that's a beautiful story because just following on what we were talking about. Right. Suppose somebody, a uh, revival historian, says, hmm, so to get revival, mm -hmm. first of all, lose your mother, be right. depressed, <laughs> and bring in a guest speaker. <laughs> yeah. So that's yeah. missing the point. That's right. But the point was, he was hungry for God. Yes. And one thing we know about those folks, they were hungry for God. They were. So there are some principles of revival which I think are, are universal, right? but no methodology. Wow. All right, here's my next George Jeffries quote. He believed that God's pouring out his spirit. Believers everywhere are receiving the Holy Spirit just as the disciples did on the day of Pentecost. Do you see that happening now? I remember uh, a group of people who were from a, an, another church um, and they were beginning to experience the freshness of the Holy Spirit. And one old Pentecostal lady turned to her and said, that's nothing, it happens every Sunday in my church. Mm. And I, I, I wonder how right that attitude was, right. that we think we have it. Yes. Whatever it happens to be. Um, so, yes, I, I, I do also see that there's a greater hunger for the Holy Spirit today than I've seen in, in, in all my life. Right. But maybe that's because I'm traveling in different places. Right. Even in Britain. Yeah. But Pentecostals or whoever need to remember what God did for them is special. It doesn't make them special. It is special. And we must keep that alive and fresh today, right today. If, we're, if I didn't ask God today, fill me anew with your Holy Spirit, then I, I don't think I'd go on. I think I'd dry out. Yeah. What's the one thing about Colin Dye you wish everybody knew? Maybe they know it. But I wish people would want people to see me in my true heart. Right. Which is to... Pass on to them anything that I've received from God. An enabler and a, and a quipper. Now, you can't find that in Ephesians chapter right. 4, apostle, prophet, etc. But actually you can in all of them. And so to success for me is to be in a connected relationship with another person right. and being able to impart to them something that I've received from God. Now, maybe people know that, but I don't necessarily think that that's the first thing they think of. They think perhaps of your position. Mm. Well, what, what are positions? Yeah, They're nothing. nothing. It's, it's, the, it, it's the integrity of being a Jesus person yeah. and sharing him. So, so many people write and they, they get a hold of my email somehow and they, they write me and talk about, thank you so much for the program and how much they enjoy the, the history of revivals. But at the end of 
almost every email is, I just want to see God move. Tell me mm-hmm. what I need to do next. What is it that we need to do? Well, God is moving. He is moving. He's never stopped moving. Right. I know that's not what, that, what people yeah, mean sure. when they say that. They know God's moving. So what's the answer? God is moving. We're not. So how do we link with what God is doing? When I link with what God is doing, right. it's all the difference. So in order, order for that, you have to have a, we come back to it, a deep hunger for God and for him. Right. Not just what he can do for you, but for him. And how do you explain it? There's a passion for, we were created for him. Yes. And as Augustine said, every heart is restless till it finds its rest in him. And when we really realize that the the deepest longing of the human heart is for God, then you may be a a world-class ballet dancer. Probably not. You might be something else. But you could be in any position. That doesn't satisfy. You can be a multi-billionaire. That doesn't satisfy. Only Christ satisfies. And a passion for him is what ignites you. And that is contagious. It is. Okay, there you go. Colin Dye. Colin, how can people find out more about you and ministry? Well, I think the simplest way, and thank you for asking, is to go to colindye.com. That's my basic website, and most things are up there. Well, thank you for coming to Texas and being a part of Revival. I know you've enjoyed, Colin. Go to the website. Uh, He's only written a few books, not much. Uh, How many books have you written? I've written over 40 books. Written over 40 books. All right, so there you go. But they're not all big books. Not all big books. Yeah. Okay. I've written one, <laughs> maybe two. I'm, I'm sure it's a big one. <laughs> no, it's not. Okay. Thank you so much, Colin, for being here. Stay in touch with us at RevivalRadioTV.com. Listen, I, I challenge you to go to the website and go down to that Revival History timeline where you can scroll through history, go back to the George Jeffries era, and go kind of... Follow what happened at Kensington Temple. You'll enjoy it. Thank you, sir. We'll see you next time right here on Revival Radio TV.